Let me introduce, uh, first of all, our guest speaker. Uh, this is Mr. Eric Fruitstone. Mr. Fruitstone uh, may not look it, but he's been in the business for over 20 years. Uh, he's a 1997 graduate of University of Florida at Gainesville in exercise and sports sciences. Uh, he went into several professional lines of work. He did an internship with the Chicago Whites uh, AA uh, club uh, in the late 90s as a strength and conditioning coach. Uh, he runs several local businesses. He is the owner and manager of Renegade Fitness in El Portel. And he is also the owner and manager of Blue, uh, Blue Dragon Taekwondo in Miami Shores, of where I uh, became associated with him. Um, he is a lifelong uh, practitioner in the martial arts. He's been in Taekwondo for 33 years. Uh, he has a very high level of achievement in the martial arts. He is currently a seventh degree black belt in the International Taekwondo Federation. Uh, he is a former member of the U.S. National ITF uh, fighting team. Uh, he's a three-time state champion in Florida Taekwondo, so a very accomplished practitioner, but also he is a certified, nationally certified instructor in uh, ITF Taekwondo, and he is a nationally certified referee. Uh, his other national certifications are also in strength conditioning, uh, and his Renegade Fitness is a company devoted to uh, conditioning, getting you back into shape after you've been out of shape. I highly recommend it. Uh, Mr. Cruz, he provides tremendous amounts of shock absorption, especially when we're talking about buttressing of the hand or alignment. Uh, unique design, what the angle does that make? What I angle does that make? If, I, if my fist is aligned properly, it makes a nice 90 degree angle. All of the bones in my hand are aligned to dissipate force into the long bones of the arm and then into the tissues of my chest and my upper back. So the, the body is really good at striking, assuming the technique is, is good. Lots of people break their hands, but there are far fewer hand fractures than there are facial fractures. And so people are a lot more likely to have their face broken than they are their hand. Uh, this stuff here. Um, can I get a, a volunteer? I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about lever systems, and then we're gonna talk about different actions, uh, in particular of the shoulder. Okay, so the uh, body has different types of lever systems. We have first, second, and third class lever systems that we use. In a first class lever, the fulcrum lies between the resistance and the applied force. So that would be extending the arm with the tricep. So from a flex position, raise your arm up. If she's going to straighten her arm, that's using her triceps. That's a first class lever. What would be another example of that? Okay, and we've got second class lever. Okay, which the resistance lies between the fulcrum and the applied force. Okay, so the example here would be standing on the tippy toes with the ankles are driving down, and the ankle, the fulcrum is further back, and we elevate through that. So all of your jumping motions, and using that second class lever. And then third class lever is the forces of the applied forces between the fulcrum and the resistance. So flexing your elbow, okay, against the resistance, like doing a bicep curl. Right. Another example of that would be. Flexing the knee with biceps and arms, with the hamstrings. Uh, we're going to go into different types of motion now. This is where we're going to put it to work. Okay? Um, we used hip, which I guess we can, we can do here. Um, you got hip flexion. Flexion, if I were going to lift my knee upward, flexing through my hip, bringing my leg towards my body, or flexing my biceps. So I want you to lift your knee up and bounce on one foot. Excellent. So that's flexion of the hip. Okay, put your foot down. Okay, bend your elbow. That's flexion of the elbow. Now, if you're talking about flexion of the shoulder, thumbs up position, raise your thumb directly up as high as you can, high as you can, high as you can. Okay, the shoulder's pretty unique. It can flex pretty much to 180 degrees. If you're real flexible, you can go even further than that. And you've got the opposite motion. You've got extension. So if I'm throwing a baseball, my tricep is extending, yes? Yes. Yeah. The flexion of the elbow and extension of the elbow. Okay? You've also got extension, extension of the hip. So if you're going to take your leg and push it behind you, keep it straight. And that's extension of the hip. Okay. Now extension of the shoulder is bringing the shoulder back as far as you can. Okay. Now how does how does shoulder extension compare to flexion? Significantly less, right? So yeah. So human beings are we're, we're good at flexion. We're not as good at extension, and yet we're better than a lot of the animals. Okay. Then you've got abduction and adduction. We've got 
uh, vertical motion and, and horizontal. So turn to face. <laughs> turn you to go to anatomical position. Thumbs up. So if she raises her arms out to her sides, okay, that shoulder abduction. I want you to abduct as high as you can. Go 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 we also have horizontal abduction and abduction. Okay? And the action is most of the same structures. And the shoulder's pretty cool, and the hip as well. These things all do the same stuff, but uh, we can circumduct our shoulders. Okay? To circumduct, you make a giant circle with your shoulder, a small circle with your shoulder. So it's a ball and socket joint. The issue with the shoulder, though, is that it sacrifices stability for mobility. Okay? It's not as stable a joint. The muscles and, and structures that hold it in place are not as strong and not as stable, but it's capable of moving all over the place. Come on. <laughs> We're going to talk about how, where, where they originate, where they insert, and what they do. Because if you understand these things, you'll understand how human striking can be such a cool thing. We're capable of so many different angles and so many different types of rotation from the left. Would you? Thank you. Nice to meet you. All right, uh, anterior deltoid, so superficial muscle. Anterior deltoid originates okay, on the lateral, one third of the clavicle, and inserts into the deltoid tuberosity, and it's involved in shoulder flexion. So we're going to shoulder flexion. Here's in the arm up, from shoulder flexion. And then, as well as medial rotation, turning the arm in. So it's involved in both of those movements. Okay? And then the medial deltoid, okay, it inserts in the acromion process and then it inserts into the, the uh, deltoid tuberosity and it's involved in uh, shoulder abduction, bringing the arm away from the body. Next one. And then the posterior deltoid, it originates in the spine of the scapula and also inserts into that deltoid tuberosity. And it's involved in shoulder extension. Yes. <laughs> and lateral rotation. Yes. Contraction <laughs> of the shoulder. We protract using our, our serratus anterior and our pec major. So we're basically from our sec position. We're going to slow it. I'm going to use the front. Okay? We're gonna, no, we're not, we're not doing any function yet. We're just going to protract the shoulder forward. So we're going to allow it to push. And that's pec major. Yeah, that is the set position. It's harder than it seems. Okay? Then once we're in the set position, then the arm's going to start to extend. All of these next movements happen fairly simultaneously. So you're going to get some flexion of the shoulder using the pec major and medial rotation using the pec major, as well as that flexion from the shoulder anterior delt. So that's going to start to bring the arm slowly forward. And then as that's happening, okay, we're bringing the arm slightly medially because I want to strike in a straight line. And I've got elbow extension. Okay? My triceps are involved in that. And then my pronator teres and my quadratus are going to pronate that fist in the last six inches of the movement. So what we're going to do to get you guys through this, we're going to do it real slow, okay? So we're, we're, we're tucked, notice my shoulder's set, notice how my chin is slightly down. And from here, we're going to fire that punch nice and slow, so we're going to start to drive the arm out, extend, 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 and then rotate. And then we use the back muscles, rhomboids, latissimus, dorsi, trapezius, to bring it right back to that set position. Don't you do that nice and slow. Do a couple of those nice and slow. Good. Make sure your hand is proper, your muscles are nice and close. Good, and then bring it back. You're doing great. <laughs> yeah. So what do, what, what, do we, what do we notice here? Notice how she's abducting the shoulder? So it's not a straight line. You guys notice that? See how that, yeah, we want to keep very tight. It travels in a nice straight line. Cool. Okay, so let's, yeah. Rotate at the end. So create torque, yeah? Cool. So that's the jack. And we also use the obliques in that motion. Okay, so I'm going to rotate slightly using my obliques, and that's going to help me generate force when I'm striking. Then we move on to the cross, which is basically following the exact same biomechanics as the jab, except it's what we call our power punch. So if you're